Hi everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. So let's go to our topic for today, which is the seventh art, cinema. So this word there is simple. Cinema comes from kiné, that means movement. Movement. So cinema, the cinema has begun, so it's considered a seventh art, art related to the beauty arts, even if it is not really one of the beauty arts, but um, we can put it as one because there is nothing in history that compares to what cinema is. So it's the first time that something like this, that this kind of art appears in history. And it concretely happened in 1895 in the 19th century. Actually, it's something really new. So this is why we would not call it one of the beauty arts, and I will explain why, but even though it became, it became one. So it started in 1895 with the Brothers Lumière in Paris. So if we go back in history to understand the beauty arts, we will see that all of the beauty arts began during the Paleolithic in between the um, Neolithic. Paleolithic is a period 150,000 150, years ago and the Neolithic 50,000 years ago until 10,000 years ago. This period of time, long time ago, was the Paleolithic, meaning the old stone, and the Neolithic, meaning the new stone. So these two periods saw how humanity discovered arts through painting, through sculpture, through music, dance, literature, and architecture. Okay, so during that period of time, the beginning of our cultures and civilization, the tribes discovered these six arts, main arts, that, um, that were the main beauty arts, okay, um, that, um, that um, were considered like um, the basements of the entire history of humanity. So all humans were designed culturally from the very beginning with these arts, okay? So it's been a long time with these um, six arts all along the world. But what happened? Cinema has only a few years. It began in 1895, so 19th century, 150,000 years after the other beauty arts. This means that um, this means that not all the cultures have gone through a process of assimilating cinema in their own uh, um, way of living, in their in their blood of culture and civilization. So even though cinema today is something that has spread around the, around the world, this doesn't mean that has touched all of them all the humans, okay? So this is why we cannot consider cinema as one of the beauty arts, because it's not one of the oldest ones that have gone through all the cultures. But even though today it has changed many of the perceptions that we have um, from, the, from the reality, it has changed and molded um, the, the vision of our humanity in many countries and cultures. So this is why we can say that cinema is now the seventh art, is one of the, uh, the beauty arts, even if it is not actually. Of course, that in the middle, we have photography. Photography is also one of the arts, but it's not one of the beauty arts. It's much more related to cinema, even if it was, um, uh, if, even if it started uh, in the beginning of the uh, of the 19th century, and um, 
but it's also um, very far the other, from the other um, arts. So it's not one of the main ones because it didn't touch all the cultures as much as the cinema did or the other ones did. So it's kind of a, it's one of arts, but it's not considered one of the main arts. So, um, so remember that for it to be one of the beauty arts, it has to have been um, encoded into the culture of many thousands of beings in different cultures, different timelines. So different uh, throughout the history, this, this art has to be, uh, has to be uh, related with, with all the beings, with all the people um, for the entire population. And photography was not that. It was not uh, something that went through all the, um, the, the people in every culture. It's not something that everyone can use or feel related to. If you think probably um, you will see that all the other arts um, has been through the, um, the common life of the people, but somehow photography did not, equally as theater. The theater is one of the expressions of literature, okay? So it's a, it's a way in between other arts. So why cinema can be taken as one of the most um, important arts that you can even call the seventh art? Because uh, basically cinema reunites and integrates all the rest of the arts. So why the cinema is considered the seventh art, art? Because basically unites all the other arts. Like for example, to make a movie, you need a story. So you need literature. The literature narrates the story, the plot of a, of a film. Um, you need photography and painting to see the colors, to understand, even if it is black and white, you need the framework to know how to show precisely the images. You need action, theater, actors, actresses. You need um, architecture also in order to, um, in order to make the, the scenery of, of, the, of the movie. You need sculpture if you are doing something to, that you need to show, uh, that you need to create, or science fiction. You need sound in order to, to move the age, to put emotion in the, in the image. You need um, dancing, not only just for dance, but also for the movement of the person that is showing something, how it moves, how it interpretates. So as you see, cinema needs all the other arts and put all the other arts together. It connected and put movement into it. It moves. So from this, we can say that not only from the objective point of view, the cinema put everything together, unites the six main arts as one, and sets movement into that. But also, as its name is saying to us, subjectively, it also moves us within. It moves our souls. Cinema began with the Lumiere brothers in Paris because they came from a family that their father was photographer. So what they did was basically put fo photos one aside the other one, one aside the other. So when you take many pictures, one uh, in many frames like uh, photograms, many photograms, what they did was to put all these photos into uh, into a um, very thin skin that in Latin skin is belly 
and um, tiny is Ula. So pellicul, pellicule is the name of that uh, celluloid uh, skin. So the celluloid skin was the pellicule, okay? Which this pellicule was moving all the time. So that's why we call it movies. They are in movement, hmm? moving constantly. So um, they were made of celluloid. That's why we also call the cinema the celluloid. Um, so what they did actually was to put a light behind it. And our eyes cannot perceive um, in many pixels. <laughs> so um, so as fast as mo it moves, the, the pellicle, the, the um, uh, around. So we see all the pictures moving like fast and we perceive like movement in the in the screen but actually it's not actually it's basically many pictures one along the other one so the first the first movies that uh were done um with with color they were painted so here's the painter each one of the of the photograms were painted so what they did was was to paint everything. They used maybe three, four colors. That's why the old movies had kind of the same colors, all of them. So the first movies that the Lumiere did were not a movie like we know today. They were just photographs in movement. So they would just film a train or film a factory, but that's it. Common situations of life in movement. Hmm? So no narrative, no plot on the story. So of course that they had no idea how to use it for because they there was no purpose on doing that. They would they were wondering so what is the use for this? So it wasn't until it arrived to the states, of course, that people started to design a tiny little story, a few seconds or or a minute to tell a story that entertained people, not only by watching images moving, but also telling something. So of course that eventually Edison, of course, uh, he started to follow everyone trying to, um, to, um, to forbid everyone to do this movie because he said that he had invented something before that was that, so what they were doing was illegal. So all the producers that were starting to do these kind of tiny movies, they went all to the new state that was created, which was California. California started to become a free part of the states, um, even though it was um, very much populated by Mexicans. So that's why it was very Christian and all the names of the places were related to the Bible. Like for example, the Holy Wood, which is the cross, okay, the Hollywood, and they created the first places to roll to make the movies in that little town. Um, and they started to do what we know today, of course. What happened? And here we go with um, with a concept of topic that I to to reach, which is the movement within. The context of that moment of that time was that the state was receiving a lot of people from other parts of the world, mainly, mainly Europe, that they had um, many wars, hunger, and they were suffering a lot in different parts of the world. So they started to go into, um, they started to go into the States, uh, to live in the States, escaping from hunger and wars and poverty. So they wanted to become free, and also there were other people that um, that started to uh, to um, to be free uh, after slavery. So a lot of people that had no idea how to read or how to understand English, everyone was speaking their own languages. So a lot of people, more people than the same population of the states, that started to come and to live in the States without knowing any word of English. So the only way in which people had to communicate the states, the laws, the propaganda was through images in, move, in, in, in movement. So cinema was very important at that time 
to help people to communicate, to know what was going on. Is in this moment the reason why uh, cinema started to become something really transcendental and important? Because what we knew through the cinema was not like the news we read on the paper. The images in movement, they were showing our, they, they were showing us emotions, movement, actions, things that moved ourselves that we can relate to. So what the cinema did was to uh, to take the um, to not only inform and send information, notify about things but also to tell a story. So suddenly, the people started to act, to show emotions, to show histories, stories, sorry, stories, ideas that could move people that watch. So it was kind of a theater, but in great scale, big scale. So one of the important things that does here the cinema is that as it is able to us what we expect, it also, like literature takes us to imagination, cinema can show us what is coming in the future, can show us science fiction, things that we expect. So cinema not only started to show entertainment, but also to promote technology, science, ideas, revolutions, and of course, philosophy. So it starts to be, to be a way to awaken the people or to set people to sleep, depending on who is controlling it. In the 19th century, with the second industrial revolution, the speed of growth was so fast that we, that everything started to go quicker. This took the people to realize that there was no much time now to read much books, to do many arts, because whatever you study or whatever you were doing, suddenly, if you take longer, suddenly it was obsolete. It changed so much that it was so fast that you couldn't adapt. So cinema was kind of a way in which a lot of people could receive many data in a short period of time. This is why the cinema became such an important tool. So what happened that there was until not much time before, um, the cinema was controlled by those who could pay the cinema. So kind of the stories were told according to the beliefs of the person that put the money to make the, the story. But the electronic revolution with the technology of these past uh, two decades started to have independent um, independent cinema, which means that all the stories that before were able to be told, now are being able to be told. So this is why they, more than ever, many stories and many things can be said, can be told to awake different ideas, to make us think, not only entertain. So today, talking about the inner movement, cinema can be the only art that can really change the consciousness of the world. Because cinema is the one that can hold all the other arts together and give them a purpose. This is why the change of consciousness is in the hands of cinema. And of course, we have many things in cinema, many options. 
And the problem is not the people that is sending a bad message through cinema. The conflict here is what are we choosing? What do we choose to see, to watch? Because it's about us, the viewers, in which depends the content of the movies. It's about what we are asking for. So of course that when you see cinema, you will see kind of the what the people in the world is waiting for. And if you take a look, you will see that there are many content right now that is about awakening. Many things that takes us to, to, to think. Of course, that there are many other things that doesn't give you anything, but you can tell that there are people awakening because of the content that we see in the movies today. This is why cinema is one of the main arts that can help into the change of consciousness because it moves within the people to make it, making them part of a story, moving the inside in order to push ourselves to change and move the outside. Cinema means movement. So if we want to move, I invite you to look for movies, to watch movies that can move yourself within. So then you can inspire in order to move the world outside. So also by saying a movie that awakens consciousness is not movies of spirituality, okay? It's not related, it doesn't matter. It's about literature. It's about interpretation of the message. It's art. So in a movie, you won't see the precisely message like this is like this and you will have to do that and that. That would be called a documentary or propaganda. What we have to understand is that it's art and it can show many different ways of something so every viewer can perceive something different. So it's not about watching a movie, it's about contemplating and Let's go to the mention for today. The vibration for today is Ru. The statement for today is, I am the guardian of evolution. The code for today is the nervous system. One of the most important ones in the body is the nervous system, which links to animals, and is composed of cells called neurons that specialize in the transmissions of electrical signals. The information of the entire body is processed by this system, reacting to stimulus that make it execute a specific answer, from mechanical and simple actions to the pupil dilatation or digestion and the heartbeat, up to complex actions like thinking, creating, feeling, and producing, projection of the universal records plane. Let's go to the alignment. Sit comfortable, close your eyes, and concentrate on your breathing. space around me, the body that I inhabit, and my own breathings. I 
I use my imagination to pay attention to every object in the room and I make it disappear, all of them. I perceive how they vanished and once all of them did it. It, it follows the roof the walls and the floor until there's nothing else but void and myself in the center of it. I stare at one point of this void and I set all the intention, all my focus, my will, strength and energy into this spot. As I stare at this point with all this energy I can see how this pot becomes a spark and the spark turns into many that ignite a fire that grows bigger and bigger, setting light into the space around me, feeling its heat on my skin. I perceive and recognize that this fire is the essence of my soul. And by it, I can build my home, the home of my dreams. I take this fire with my hands. And by a slow and soft dance, I start to bring this fire everywhere, building up my house, rising up the walls, the rooms, and the gardens. I designed my home. I start to decorate my home with furniture, frames,
becoming aware that everything is inside of this home is my soul, is myself. I recognize my organs as every room, my bones and skin in the walls, my heart in the kitchen and my projects in the garden. We seen in casa. As I head towards, I head to the room where I have to sign my own cinema, the room of the third eye, where I made my home cinema. I turn the screen and I'm watching it my whole life the movie of my entire life made into cinema. And I recognize this life as the eternal and constant movement that takes me to evolution. I am the garden of evolution. I am the garden of evolution. I am the garden of evolution. I have the movement in me. I have, I have, I have. Take a deep breath and each one come back here and now at its own time. And those who had been following the task for this month, take this energy, put it into the water, and pour it on the seeds and plants that we have sowed. Thank you everybody for having been here another day. And 
As always, see you tomorrow at the same time to close the week of emotion in Taurus month.